folks, Thursday night, welcome aboard Murder Hobo Inc., the calamity ed- or the cacophony edition. Excuse me. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Maybe take your mind off things going around the world uh, for a while, uh, at least for two hours. Uh, may even go shorter than that, but who knows? Uh, welcome, and don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. Uh, if you want to buy cool stuff like a phone case or a pillowcase or t-shirts, duvet cover, t-shirts, shit like that, the link is down there. Take a look at that. Uh, if you're in the market for some uh, personalized dice, custom dice, like this, uh, go on over to Twitter. Uh, find at Pirate Dog Dice. See if they got the time, energy, and uh, desire to make you some. Uh, they're pretty good. They roll high for some reason, but uh, you know, nobody's going to bitch about that except your DM. Uh, and if your game stinks, unlike ours, uh, go on over to oddfishgames.com, find their adventure sense section. Uh, they've got over 60 cents to tickle your nose or make you puke in the case of Kyle, uh, because he didn't follow the instructions. Dumbass. Don't inhale them deeply, boys and girls. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer like me, only gooder, uh, check out their Shine System. Uh, as I said before, this is the Cacophony Edition. Let's go ahead and introduce you to our PCs. We will start with David. David, who are you and who are you playing? Hi, I'm David. Uh, tonight I play Zadar, the changeling arcane trickster with uh, yeah, little levels and, and wizard. Uh, yeah, he's or they have made some changes lately, so it'll it, it's gonna get interesting, folks. I also play Ingve in the Calamity campaigns, and I'm also part of the Socium project on Between the Rolls. Uh, so you can catch me there, and every once in a while you catch me on a one shot on Saturdays, the following Saturdays. So anyway, that's me. I can see Camille running around back there. <laughs> yeah, we aren't sure what she's doing. Yep. Uh, Carrie, you are up next. Go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah, that's just getting old tonight. Uh, folks, uh, what can I say? Cacophony is just an absolute shit show right now. These guys attempted to prevent <clears throat> a catastrophic destruction to citizenry in Nathian, which is where they are at, the Gnomish capital. Uh, little screw up. So they decided to use the time travel amulet that they had borrowed uh, from Mortimer J. Sneed uh, and were able to successfully use it. They went back in time three hours. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Zadar decided to introduce himself to his alter self and alter Camille self. uh, And everybody discovered that uh, Men in Black 3 had it right where there is death. There will always be death. Uh, however, they've also caused a problem with Brock Hardjaw's wife, Hortense, uh, <laughs> bringing her back to the past when her future self was killed uh, during the explosion at Zeppelin Farms. Uh, As it ended, they were able to kill off the BBG, in this case, uh, Godot, uh, Gadget, or Gadget, Go. Um, So, you know, there's a plus side there. They still haven't found Mortimer. Uh, Three airships exploded. Uh, They have not discovered the sandwich. And uh, they have headed back to their room at the end. At the end of the day, we will see how that works out. You guys are going to go ahead and take the long way, if I'm not mistaken, around the backside. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I thought I thought we made it back to the end. I thought we made it back. You will, uh, oh, okay, without issue. So, what do you guys want to do? You guys have the room. Uh, you're still paid up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're just like, well, shit. <laughs> we gotta, we have gotta find Mortimer. Uh, so yeah, uh, Camille, do you want to check your 
spell book to see if you got something to disguise yourself. There's a knock on the door. Oh, of course there is. <laughs> uh, no, all your spell slots are used. Yeah, we haven't had a long rest yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I so I opened the door. Un unfortunately, I am the redhead again, Jessica Rabbit. So that's fine. Uh, there is a young dwarf wearing a white shirt, wearing a necktie, uh, and he has a book in his hand. And he says, "Have you heard the word?" And what word is that? We are looking for time travel experts to go ahead and join our esteemed panel tomorrow. Would you be interested? And are you qualified? And what might uh, this panel uh, be named? Do you have a name for it or anything like that? Nope. I'm just the uh, screamer. You're the screamer. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes, we'll be <clears throat> interested and we'll be there uh, short with. Uh, when, what time is this happening? Tomorrow morning, right out front. Okay. Well, we'll... We're definitely interested, and we'll see about being there. So thanks for spreading the word. Bye. <laughs> you shut the door. You hear him walk away. You hear him knock on the next door. That is awesome. Oh, my God. They all had different approaches on how to do this. My favorite, though, was just like, I'm going to learn about time travel. Time travel. <laughs> time travel. Time travel. That was outside of Cooper's. So... <clears throat> uh night is falling you guys have successfully made it back to your room uh of course it's your room exactly and that's what i'm waiting to for to show up when you said there was a knock at the door <laughs> they wouldn't have knocked though yeah i was going to say no they no I don't know. There's so many ways this could have gone. <laughs> so, okay. Question. Are yep. there now two time traveling amulets? Yep. So chances are the past Camille and Zadar may have used it to <laughs> unfuck everything <laughs> again no because you're still here we're still here but yeah but i mean would it work or we just keep creating variants of ourselves so you create variants of yourself okay yeah <laughs> so well eventually they're going to turn up here uh, we'll have to figure out what we want to do. I mean, our chances of catching Mortimer might be tomorrow. Till then, we have to avoid brush <clears throat> hard jaw, jaw and all that. My question is, is though, um, it's actually Hortense's future self that's still alive and her past self has died. Correct. Got it. Okay. Well. This is going to get complicated. It's <laughs> headed to the sanitarium in no time, I would imagine. Oh, they both are. I mean, God, Brock must be devastated. <clears throat> I don't think so. No, because you brought her forward. Yeah, because she's a she's a variant. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, Brock knows she's here. Brock was weeping over the body wearing her dress when she came down the street. Yeah. No. Okay. I don't think Brock saw me shapeshift. I don't think Brock knows that I'm a shapeshifter. So. He does not because you've been the same appearance forever. Yeah. And there was a reason for that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, okay, I, I think we're good, but our past selves are going to show up here. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we call ourselves Cigar and Camille Prime. 
wear the prime? I think so. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Give me a con save, Zadar. <laughs> it's always just Zadar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a con save or a check? Con, con save. Con save. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, 14, what is my con? Uh, 16. 14 plus 2. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So <coughs> the simple solution for us is to go back to our timeline, but that's fucked now. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, that's always an option. We just deal with the consequences in that timeline, but I don't know. Mm -mm, probably not. So. Um, it would, in theory, eliminate your doubles, mm -hmm. but you would have to get uh, Hortense Rockjaw to go with. Yeah, which <coughs> I know that isn't happening. So it's probably in an asylum right now. You don't know, or or at least the the <clears throat> justice center. So. Yeah, because the house the house got damaged. Okay. <laughs> if you think they, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, <I'm>... <laughs> <laughs> go go find go find a groundhog and go drive off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. uh, this is the thing about death. It's painful. <laughs> Not poison. Not good poison. Poison poison's still painful. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right. So, yeah, let's... Uh, yeah. Well, her and one body that was her, so... But if, if you take somebody else and go back to that exact moment, there's going to be two of them. Right. That's why I'm saying we need Mortimer. Um, <coughs> yeah, because we can take Mortimer back. Chances are he's already experienced all this and he knows what's going to happen. <clears throat> Uh, I could do that. I could. Um, I can go as and I can shape shift <laughs> and, and get another room. So, I mean, okay. I take it. Uh, Lily is the the matron's name of the hotel, right? I believe, or. Um, Nelly, something like that. Yeah. It's uh why don't I have her name? Oh, Millie. 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 That's, That's yeah. it, Millie. Uh, <clears throat> Millie hasn't seen me as Nick Rivers, so uh, so <laughs> nope. All right. So <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna Nick River shape shift and uh make my way down there. Okay. Uh, you get in there. Uh, her amateur or uh, robot is there and asks, What do you want? Uh, good evening. I was wondering if you had a room available for the night. He knocks on the door behind him. Millie comes out, uh, with a face mask on. Clearly, she's doing a beauty regimen right now. Pairs <laughs> and curlers. She looks like she ought to be on mama's family. Mm -hmm. Uh, Looks you up and down. <laughs> uh, yeah, she kind of, uh, you know, tries to hide the mask and uh, says, oh, yeah, sure, you know, it'll be five gold pieces per night. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I will. Uh, how about four nights? And uh, I'll hand her the gold. 
Uh, yeah, when I go. Sure, four nights. Uh, sure, she gives you the room key. Uh, you recognize this room key as the room right behind you. That's it. <laughs> nice. So we could hear ourselves. <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. As you start to climb the stairs, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to beat cheeks there so I can collect Camille and get to our room. Okay. Uh, perception, uh, 18. <clears throat> you see uh, your other selves headed this way. Uh, okay. I hurry up. I'm like, Camille, we got to go. Got to go. Got to run. hold against me to see if I spot you. Five. Uh, <laughs> five. Reroll. Three. Eight. Okay. Uh, you lean in. Uh, tell Camille, get your ass going. Do you take anything? Just what we had on us, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Cheese. We, we kept the bag of holding, so they got a bag of holding, too. So we Correct. <laughs> Okay. okay. <clears throat> you guys go around the corner as you hear footsteps coming up the stairs. You manage to round it. Folks at home, this is a 50s motel. Uh, you hear the door open and the door close. You can hear their voices clearly discussing uh, what a mess those puppies were, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I wonder who blew up the balloons, things of that nature. Door shuts and you do not hear anything. You go around the corner. And there is your room. Uh, fortunately, it appears as though it has been cleaned since your two associates uh, violated it in the sexual liaison that they had. No black light <laughs> available. You guys go in. <clears throat> you can hear some low murmuring. Uh, you really can't make out much. Uh, the walls are pretty solid, but your friends were pretty amorous. So, uh, you guys should be only getting a good night's sleep. <clears throat> uh, is, is there a balcony in the Zadar and Camille's room? The other one. The first one? Yeah. The balcony extends all the way around. It's not a private balcony. It's a walkway. Okay. Um, is the window open? You guys never open the window. Okay. Um... I'm going to cast Find Familiar. I'm going to summon Elmen in the shape of like a pigeon mm -hmm. and tell Omen to, to perch uh, on their balcony. And I'm going to see if I can hear better or see better. Uh, no, they will close the curtain. They need privacy. They, as you guys are aware, Somebody has been watching you uh, from down below. Uh, yeah, they're not still got that to deal with. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to take any undue uh, issues with, you know, silhouetting themselves in case it's an archer. Uh, they will close up and they will not open that window. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I recall <laughs> Omen back. <laughs> okay. Snap. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, they closed, the, they closed the curtain, so I could not see her here in um okay yeah that i agree so, <clears throat> camille d8 uh, about four hours into your long rest all hell breaks loose. Uh, it is the rainy season. Nathan and a rather massive thunderstorm hits the area, uh, drenching the region with rain, uh, lightning forks across the sky. It is just an ugly thunderstorm. Uh, this continues until the hour before you would normally wake up. Uh, give me constitution checks, both of you. <laughs> See if we got uh, enough rest. Uh, 15. 
you both get just enough rest to go ahead and recover all of your hit points and spell slots. Uh, As you look outside your own window, the storm is not letting up. It is just fucking pouring. Cats and dogs. All right. Um, Okay, we're up before they do. So what do we want to do? Just get the hell out of here and (coughs) uh, try to huddle up at like an early morning cafe or something? No. Right, right outside your door in the plaza. Yeah. No, first light, eight a.m. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning. Uh, you guys were gonna wake up an hour before, so I'll say six. Right, right. Okay. Well, we'll do that. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. No, I just wish there was a way to disguise you instead of having you running around and burning your slots on invisibility. I can make the swords in <clears throat> your head. <laughs> <laughs> from total recall you can always find an umbrella mm-hmm. because uh, do that. you guys can tell that this rain is just fucking buckets i right. mean it, it is something that dumbass weathermen would go out and stand there oh the wind is horrible uh it is a bad storm yeah yeah well <clears throat> you we'll don't do even that. need to roll an insight to determine that you aren't sure what kind of fucktard would actually go for a job in this weather. Yeah. You can, but it's stationary. It's stationary. It's like it's like a room. Like think of Harry Potter's room of requirement. It's kind of like that. <clears throat> no, only the people that you designate in your party to see it and that would be myself and you would be the only ones that would know that a door is there and can see it so uh, the duck blind approach yeah I mean we can walk up to I don't know like a, <sighs> a, anything with a wall and just put it there and you know look from the inside out you know, so, but, you know, you can, you can create a door with a window for us to see out of, <laughs> so, you know. Sure. Okay. That'll be good. <coughs> Okay. Uh, where do you want to eat? Uh, yeah. Hmm, I'm trying to think what was <laughs> what was open. Um, well, you can go check. Yeah, but do we go as ourselves? Or vice versa because the guy at the cabbage patch knows you doesn't know me <clears throat> nick rivers though okay uh, yeah <coughs> I'll, I'll take a chance and jessica rabbit it and and go and speak so to our <laughs> two jessica rabbits I, I guess I don't know. That might be a bad idea. The guy's not going to know me otherwise. So either that, or I can say I'm picking up an order for. Okay, I'll do that. I'll say as Nick Rivers and say I'm picking up an order. Okay, because uh, I know their information and stuff, so I can totally pull sure. that off. D twelve against me. 
Nine. Ten. Uh, we didn't get any order. Uh, no, I'm here to place an order for them to take back to them at their hotel. Oh, uh, okay. What do you want? Uh, <clears throat> I know what Camille would want. Coffee, cheese, and any kind of like, uh, you know, bagel roll bread to go with it. Okay. So, so two orders of those. And, um, I know everything's usually on the house, but I'm going to, I'm going to tip. So. Uh, damn right. You're going to tip. You ain't them. <laughs> uh, it's going to take a couple minutes. Uh, murder hobo six to be exact. D12 okay. against me, Camille. One, uh, as you sit there and you wait, uh, you see a familiar subject walk into the plaza with his latest invention. Phineas Ferb approaches Millie's and you can see him go up the stairs and knock on your original door. Uh Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh it's, it's fucking thunderstorming you can't hear shit uh you see him go inside uh and that's all you see uh, after about five minutes zadar comes back as rick uh enters the sanctum has your food you can let him know what you saw or okay oh Okay. Uh, Phineas understands time travel. <laughs> so if I like intercept him when he's coming out, might be able to enlist his aid. Plus he's going to be fascinated by all this. So, so yeah, you know. No, he's Rick. I'm the guy. <laughs> I can side shift. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so I'm going to. So, has Phineas come out yet? Or D12 against me. Okay. Hmm. Okay, nine. Uh, you haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. Okay. All right. Yep. You guys uh, eat your food, keep an eye out the window. Fucking just pouring rain. I mean, this this is a bad storm. This is about as bad a storm as you've ever been in. This is just a mess. Uh, a few after a few minutes, a few of the uh, screamers show up, looking around, uh, and they begin to set up a booth. Okay, I. Uh, yeah, they set up in, in the rain. Yep. <laughs> oh shit! Don't tell me you rolled a one. Uh, one of them's getting struck by lightning. We'll see how many get struck by lightning. And yes, I did roll a one. Oh, you fucker! <laughs> Five, thirteen, three, eighteen, sixteen, and. Four. Uh, three of them have to make saving throws. Oh, man. 19, 17, and a three. One of them is struck dead in the head, and uh, his associates carry him off to the nearest temple, uh, leaving your structure only half completed. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> 12. 12 yeah <clears throat> okay well, well we'll let them deal with that emergency uh you can see that the fragile canopy is getting caught in the wind and whipping it around uh they've chosen green and white stripes for your tent uh okay. but the uh, pythons are in the cobblestone okay uh, a few minutes later uh the other six holding coffee in danish uh, wander up slow to the thing, see that the fabric is flapping, uh, run up and immediately secure it. And they are 
able to get the tent set up. Uh, they stand underneath it. Uh, and you guys notice your door, your or original door, open up and Camille and Zadar are coming down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> so what's yeah. our game plan, Camille? Do we confront them or <clears throat> what? <laughs> Zadar, you start to get a piercing headache. Oh, no. Oh, I try to compose myself with the headache. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Zadar, are you just going to wait in there? Um... <clears throat> Or, or I can shape shift. So, yeah, I got a headache. <laughs> How close are you going to come to them, Camille? Okay. Uh, keep in mind you are invisible. However, any puddles that you step in will make splashing noises. Uh, the ferocity of the storm seems to not be not be decreasing. Uh, and Camille, you are standing out in the open plaza area as lightning forks across the sky. Uh, you constantly move closer and closer. Everybody is underneath the tent. They are talking. <clears throat> and it seems as though you and Zadar are trying to ascertain whether or not you have spent your money wisely considering the, um, si the weather situation here. A flash of lightning. Give me a dexterity save, please, at advantage. Okay. Uh, a lightning bolt does hit the plaza, cracking open some of the cobblestones, but it is not close enough to you to do any damage, although you feel the reverberations. <clears throat> you inch closer and closer. And the screamers seem to be split three to three. Also, they want to know where their friends are. Your other selves do not know where they are uh, because they did not see them. Uh, they don't know that one of their colleagues has been struck by lightning and is probably going to turn into a Frankenstein. Several people start to make their way towards the middle of the plaza. One of them you recognize. He is... Uh, uh, where is he? Seamus O'Shea, the half-orc drunk that you met in the brothel. Uh, he has a bottle of liquor underneath his arm and strides along like he just got out of Shawshank Prison and watch just pouring down on him. Uh, Camille, you can hear him converse with your other self and other Zadar as the screamers just sit and finish their bagel and coffee. Uh, they are understandably curious as to what this is all about. You and Zadar go ahead and give them several questions, enough to go ahead and do insight rolls for me, please, <clears throat> as yourselves. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, he seems a little drunk, but not overly so. Uh, what would you like to ask him as your other selves? Um, I mean, is he there to answer questions about time travel or discuss it's, time it's, travel? It's a job interview. He's interested in the job. Okay. He's interested in the job. <laughs> He's just... <laughs> Have... Yes. Uh, well, uh, this one time I was in a tavern and, uh, I, I, I was really drunk and I was passed out. Uh, but when I woke up, I was in that same tavern, uh, but I wasn't drunk anymore. So I figure, I think it was the same day. So I must've time traveled. I see. <clears throat> Do we have your con yes, contact uh, information? One of the screamers will jump up, uh, produce a clipboard, and go ahead and take down Seamus's information. He'll take a long draw off the bottle 
and begin to wander off into the rain. Uh, another one is a lady uh, that you recognize as Brock Hardjaw's wife. Ooh. Well, yes. Yes, I have with you guys. That one uh, told me to hang on to a chain and there was a flash of light and now my husband thinks I'm crazy. <clears throat> the screamer steps up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, give me Where perception. Where are they staying? Because their, their house was destroyed. So. Uh, they are staying at uh, a place in Dirigible Farms. Okay, and we have that that info, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. Give me uh, perception checks, both of you, and then Camille, give me a perception check as your invisible self. Uh, 12. 12 plus 8, dirty 20. <clears throat> All three of you hear the clomp of boot steps uh, turning around Camille Prime. You guys see Brock Hardjaw, along with several of his expendies, headed this way. He looks very determined. He comes up and apologizes for any inconvenience and asks his wife to come with him. Uh, it is time to go get breakfast and go see the children. <clears throat> if you cast fog cloud you will not be invisible yeah that would not be a good idea you could be in the fog cloud give me an intelligence check As you cast the fog cloud, just for a split second, you can't remember if Brock was on the left or on the right. So as the fog cloud descends, you become visible in the middle of the cloud. You know they're right there. But now you're having self-doubts on which one was which. So which one? <clears throat> they are both wearing uh, travel cloaks because of the rain. Right? You're going to have to move the cloak around. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> D12 against me. See if you grab the right one. <laughs> you grab a set of meaty ankles yeah she could have meaty ankles <laughs> they're both gnomes she could have cankles so do you are you dropping them is that why you're grabbing the ankles or what who's who yeah because brock's wearing boots well Uh, insight Zadar, insight uh, other Camille. <clears throat> uh, same, 17. You are not sure where the hell the fog cloud came from, but you surmise that maybe other Camille is here because you guys already ran into other Zadar. Yeah. But you aren't certain because you can't see Jack shit uh camille you got a hold of somebody's ankles what do you want to do so you're grabbing each one of them oh uh give me an intelligence check uh 
uh, you hear, Gah, what is that? And what sounds like the unsheathing of a weapon from the one on the right. Where are you going? Uh, intelligence check again. You are in the middle of a fog cloud. You do know where you were, uh, but you also know that Brock Hardjaw's men stand between you and the Sanctum. So you're going to have to choose left or right to go around them. You also hear a weapon crash down on the cobblestones just as another uh, blast of thunder hits. <laughs> there wasn't a flash of light, right? Just thunder? You're in you're in a fog cloud. You have no idea. Yeah. Right. Fog, fog cloud's pretty wide. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Give me a dexterity check. Uh, you managed to weave your way around it. Uh, Hortense is yelling, let go of me, let go of me. Brock, hard jaws, stern voice is yelling out, where are you, my dear? Where are you, my dear? Uh, the clomp of booted feet and another clap of thunder appears. You pick up the pace and you move out of the fog cloud, get your bearings and find the portal into the sanctum. Persuasion roll. Yeah. Can I assist her? <laughs> no, she. You, you can't talk outside right. of the sanctum. Yeah, she'll follow you. You, you guys duck in. Uh, the fog cloud lifts. Uh, you guys are in the sanctum. You see Brock, his men. Zadar and Camille and six gnomes looking around, trying to figure out where she went. <clears throat> you also see Brock Hardjaw sternly wagging his finger at both of you because he believes that there is something amiss here. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, I mean, she, she'll she remember me as Nick Rivers, I think, wouldn't she? Did you deal with her as Nick Rivers? Yeah, the past one. Um, oh, the others? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Who wants to explain it to her? Okay. Go ahead. Give me a roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I tell her, I know your husband loves you. Uh, this is very traumatic what he's gone through and all that, but he's going to think you're insane and he's going to, there's no telling what he's going to do. He might commit you or something like that. I mean, he is an officer of the law. Um, so I, I think our best options, if we go back to the beginning and just, you know, Camille and I will, will try to find another way around this. Straight up D20 against me. Okay. Nope, just him. Uh, 16. She is incensed that you guys are responsible for dragging her out of this timeline because she believes you. Uh, she is not sure you know what you're doing and thinks that maybe turning you into her husband might be able to go ahead and clear her name. I, I tell her that's that's valid. That that is that is that is rational. That is that it's valid.
She does not know that she died. Okay. And I will tell her. <laughs> I will tell her. And I'd say, you're going to have to sit down for this because there's a reason why Brock is so upset. And okay. In the explosion, you know, you weren't there. You weren't present when the original hit, but now you're, <laughs> your your past self did not survive. She immediately breaks down bawling. Okay. And, and Sadar's gonna gonna console her and hopefully Camille comes in with it too. Yeah. <laughs> but how do I get my life back? What happened? What happens we can, if we go back we can and take I'm you still there. dead? We can take you there. We can take you You've already to the life you knew once. before all this happened. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can get to the moment where Camille and I do this. There's consequences for us, too. And every time I time travel, I, I'm just going to get one close, get sicker, and Lord knows what will happen. How do you propose we do this? That's a good question. I mean, we could go to... I thought you said you knew what you were doing. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie to you. We are not experts on this. We could go to the... We can go to the... Hear me out. We can go to the exact same spot that we that we jumped, and use the medallion to jump back at that moment. That should put herself right back where she was. So, what do you think? A couple seconds before, it would have to be at the exact same moment. Mm -hmm. a natural one she is exceptionally dubious that you can pull it off and reaches for the door handle I, I just ask her just give it a chance I mean we've got nothing to lose <laughs> I have my entire family and or apparently my life to lose what do you have to lose nothing you are murder hobos Yeah, your husband is, is not. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she becomes the Joker. <laughs> uh, we just want to save you from that plight. Camille, old approach, nice. Oh, we're going good cop, bad cop. <laughs> uh, that got her attention. Can you promise me you can make this right? We can. We will make it right. 10,000 years have passed. You are still mm -hmm. looking for the proper role. I, I tell her. I tell her, look, I am the most self-absorbed person that I know, <laughs> but I will put myself and my life at risk to make sure we get this right. Okay. What do you want to do? Okay. Um, like I said, with Camille, we got to get it to the exact moment. So, I mean, the moment has passed, but I think if we get to the place where, where we took off, that somehow can affect our chances. Wouldn't you think uh, of landing right where we were? Not necessarily. I mean, apparently Mortimer's time traveled all over the fucking globe and he didn't have to be there. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we wanted to, I mean, technically, I mean, we could uh, do it from, from the room in the, the hotel. Yeah. That would be yeah. reasonable. Yeah. <clears throat> I tell her that, look, we have a room in the hotel that our other selves are in. If we can get there, get to our, our room. <laughs> 
do the jump from there. We'll, Maybe we'll, this time it'll be the jump home. Exactly. <laughs> Scott back. Okay. Up. Well, you still have a problem. Uh, Brock Hardjaw and his men are searching the plaza. Your other selves are still trying to interview candidates uh, that are filtering in. The lightning storm is not letting up at all. Um, and you Question. have to. Mm -hmm. um, technically, we are not casting a spell. Mm -hmm. We're using a device. Can we use the device from inside the sanctum? I think <laughs> theoretically we could. I will rule that you can, but being a magical enclosure may cause unwanted circumstances. Uh, be open a wormhole. Role. We'll be sucked into the astral plane. You'll hear the Doctor Who theme song going off in the background. Yeah, I say I forgot that it's an interdent. Even though it's a medallion, it still functions like an interdimensional space. So an inter uh, interdimensional space within a space causes that that what they call, I guess, uh, event. So. Yep. No. No, not Missy Step. Uh, I can vortex warp us. Or at least one of you. <laughs> I could vortex. I can cast it twice and get, get you both out of here within third. Yeah, you could, you, or you I can just make us, I can make us all invisible. Yeah, invisibility would be the easiest. So, sure. Okay. That's what you're going to do? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Lightning flashes across the sky. Ooh, comes close to hitting one of you, uh, but it does not. You guys run for cover, I assume. Mm -hmm. Dexterity checks for all three of you. I will roll for her. <laughs> Dexterity check. <laughs> Oh man, uh, twenty one. Uno, she oh, falls me. flat on her face. You guys, I pick her up. <laughs> you don't know where she's at. She's invisible. Oh shit! So D twenty against me, straight okay. up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're trying to, uh, uh, I'm gonna whisper to her, Hortense. <laughs> uh. 14. Both of you re-roll, you're the same. Uh, 16. Uh, Zadar, you are closer to her, uh, and you reach out and feel her. Uh, she reports that she's injured. Okay. I, I, let's get you to the, the hotel. We'll take care of you there. You hoist her up. You guys continue mm -hmm. forward. Uh, you make it underneath the canopy. <clears throat> From the canopy on the second floor, uh, you can see despite the weather, the gnomes apparently are used to this, uh, you're getting brisk business there. The screamers have successfully done their job as you get several people there. You also notice several individuals uh, attired in library garb are there. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Uh, it has Mortimer made an appearance. No tall humans. Okay. Just gnomes uh, and a ha drunk half orc. Okay. Uh, as soon as you guys want to, you can zip around the corner and go into your room. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to zip around the corner and get into the room. Okay. Drop invisibility. When we get to the, uh, the uh, door inside. <clears throat> sure. Uh, you guys make it inside. Hortense is exceptionally concerned. You can see it on her face. Uh, she is very dubious that this plan is going to be successful. Yeah. Oh, she has a scraped knee. A little blood. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll 
Uh, I'll 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 clean it up and bandage it for her. So. Okay. Um. Yeah. So uh, I say. Uh, Frank was ruling that it, it could probably. We doesn't probably, matter where you're doing. It doesn't it. matter where we're we're doing it. Mortimer so. was all over the fucking continent and. He was beaming out from the uh, Grand Academy. Yeah. So as long as you guys know, as long as we know as where we was, know, and have an idea of the general surroundings, I will rule that you can give it a shot. Uh, thing is, it's going to put us there right at the moment of your thunder wave. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or right before it. <laughs> or right after it. Or right after, yeah. No. no. There were seven witnesses. She um, was not a witness at all. No, she, she was, she was just a bystander that I grabbed. Um, let's, let's unfuck this. <laughs> uh I've got a couple of slots. Uh, we can go invisible after we. We only have a few seconds to to kind of take it all in, and before people are going to start coming after us. So, yeah, there were nine witnesses and five civilians. She was one of the civilians. Uh, five of them, five of the witnesses, clearly observe you blasting everybody, Camille. Okay, how are you going to do this? Okay. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right. Uh, okay. I tell, I tell Horton, I said, of course, you know, this is going to be disorienting, but, you know, uh, if we get you there at the right moment, you won't even know it. So. We hope. Yeah. Okay, Frank, what kind of percentages are we ta talking? <laughs> Who's doing the roll first? You want Give me your... to do the percentages? Oh, shit. No, uh, it's the D20 first. The D20 first. Okay. Uh, any modifiers? Any advantage? Anything like that? Nope. Okay. You've only done it once before. Okay. Uh, First, give me your con check. Okay. Uh, my con is 12. <laughs> you feel queasy as you go ahead and spread out the chain. Mm -hmm. Ribs kind of feel a little bit strange. Roll your d20. Okay. Okay, 15. Roll your percentage. Okay. Unless you want Camille to do it. Camille, it's up to you. Do you want to do it? I did it last time, right, Frank? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Camille. <clears throat> Fingers crossed. Roll high. <laughs> <clears throat> you stretch out. You can see a tear running down Hortense's eye as she kind of quivers and shakes. Uh, Zadar, as, as you reach down to touch the amulet to the chain, you don't feel well at all. Uh, right. But there's a blinding light. There's a boom this time. Uh, you you don't remember that or you were too disoriented to hear that. And as you do so, you guys find yourself on the street where you were. Uh, dust is in the air. But there's nothing in front of you. So some kind of other incident happened. 
or something. You are turned around. Okay. Uh, give me another con check, Zadar. Okay. Uh, Camille, con check, and Hortense, con check. Uh, for Zadar, 11. Zadar, you throw up. Uh, Camille, you throw up. Hortense s- just steps away. She goes, I- I- I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I have kids. I don't know what you guys are doing. She doesn't understand at all. She sees you two throwing up. She runs to help the truly wounded. She is not going to participate in your nonsense bullshit. And her kids come running out of the rubble of their home. Moments later, Brock Hardjaw appears uh, with Hente, his lieutenant, as does Colonel Clank and his two associates. Everybody converges over the dead realder as you guys are on your hands and knees throwing up. Uh, Zadar, give me a dexterity check. Okay. Make sure I don't throw up on Harfin. Sure, I don't. (laughs) <laughs> dexterity check okay yep. not bad 19 uh you managed to rake in the chain and the amulet uh as uh hente comes over zadar camille is that you what are you guys doing here you got to get out of here this place is uh, this, we're under attack uh i agree <laughs> and yeah there was an explosion at Zeppelin Farms. I, I'm not sure what's going on. It's just there's a lot of damage here. There's dead bodies here. We aren't really sure. Give me perception checks, both of you. Okay. That I rolled good on, Nat 20. <laughs> uh, Camille, as you're wiping your mouth, getting the vomit off of your chin, you, you yeah, I'll press the digitate. Yeah. <laughs> the dust is right. You're, you are not pressed to digitating anybody at this moment in time because you, Zadar, noticed that the witnesses to the unleashing of magical power by Camille are talking to Colonel Clank and pointing in your direction. Oh, right, shit. Sure. Okay. Colonel Clank also points in your direction nods his head to the citizens uh, and begins to come over flanked by two of his guards. Uh, uh, now, you may cast press to digitate if you want, but cool. Colonel Clank looks rather determined as he storms over to you two. Okay. Uh, do you want to go invisible or we're, or we're going to face the music? You guys are all short on hit points and spell slots yeah. because you had a hell of a time uh, with Gadget. Uh, Colonel Clank comes over and asks you, Zadar and Camille, what has transpired here? Uh, uh, We cornered the terrorist and this is what happened. She's, She's gone. I think she imploded. She did implode. It has taken a large number of people out as well as several structures. I am told that you, Camille, were responsible for a rather significant amount of damage and several deaths. Is this the case? That's your answer. <laughs> Edge 22. Yeah. It was life and death between her and the terrorist. Colonel Clank ponders for a moment, looks down at his metallic feet. Nicely done. Uh, (laughs) D12 against me. Oh, man. 
I'm like Camille, and I get make it all eleven. Make it all, I'll make it all you know dramatic. <laughs> A small puppy skitters up to Camille and begins to lick the vomit off her face. Oh, it's one of the puppies you did not see the first time around because you did not you were not present for the traffic backlog. Uh, it is cute. It's a small beagle puppy. Uh, Colonel Clank says, persuade me. <laughs> I think you do too. <laughs> I'm just playing this up. <laughs> You may keep the puppy, but my friends, I am sorry. You must come with us. We you will. are to be detained. We, we will. We'll go. Uh, you guys get up, stagger. You're mm -hmm. uh, still a little queasy. Uh, yeah. You can see Hortense talking to her husband and pointing at you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Clank and his associates kind of eyeball the situation. Colonel Clank informs his associates, uh, take them to the gulag. I will be there forthwith. Uh, you hear Brock Hard, Jaw Clank, I need a word with you. Um, do you go with the other two? I would uh, have struggle. As you go through, you will pass Brock Hard, Jaw his wife and his kids who were injured in the blast, but are alive. You will see the real estate agent dead. You will see bits and pieces of gadget all over the place. You will also see the other victims in the pulse wave dead. Uh, you get a mixed sense of feelings as clearly a nine 11 style mess has occurred uh, and you aren't sure how this is going to go. Uh, did uh, did Zeppelin's uh, nephew survive? Who? The one with the propeller on his head. Who? Oh, never mind. <laughs> you never met him. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> you never table talk. Did he survive? <laughs> We don't know. Uh, you did see sandwiches. Uh, you know, George Bailey. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't get that, uh, you're some kind of monster. It's called It's a Wonderful Life. And it's a. That's right. Uh, yeah. So you guys are led through as you reach the end of the street. You notice some jackass has got a dead oxen on here. People are moving it around. Uh, Antonio Scarpacci waves to you. Uh, oh, you missed it. Uh, you could have been heroes again. Uh, sees the guards looking sternly and melts into the background like Homer Simpson does to the bushes. Because as you are being clanked forward, everybody in this region knows you be in trouble. Uh, you're also both covered in vomit. Uh, there's a little bit of a smell going on. Yeah. Uh, but we're not we're not shackled or anything. We're totally cooperating, right? Yeah, there, there's no uh, Colonel yeah. Clank does not feel the need for shackles uh, okay. because you guys are somewhat heroes, uh, mm -hmm. but you might be heroes gone bad. Uh, as you tromp up the hill uh, towards the gulag, you will pass the library and you will see none other than Phineas Ferb, who says, "I have the info you need." But but meet us at the Justice Center. But I, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, you also notice his father uh, crossing, kind of looking at you guys, uh, gives you a little wave and heads over to his son. As you guys turn around, you notice he's pointing and talking and doing this. Um, you guys get to the Justice Center. Uh, the two guards don't smell you. They don't care about your appearance. 
uh, and they escort you to a cell. It's kind of a nicer cell than the first one you were in. Okay. And tell you that Colonel Clank will be with you as soon as his investigation is complete. I um, I I clean us up. Uh, press the digitation's a cantrip, so so I'll go ahead and clean us up. Uh, persuade one of the guards to bring water for the puppy. Yeah. I will bring uh, refreshment for the canine. Uh, you guys are treated not well, but you guys are treated neutrally. They have been told by Colonel Clank that you are not going to resist. They they feel that you guys are okay. Uh, they leave you in there. They leave you alone. Uh, they bring water for the puppy and some kind of good boy treat because it's a robot and they don't know any better. Yeah. So you guys are there. Uh, who wants to roll the D12? Um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. Zadar, did you have something to say? Uh, yeah, we'll probably <clears throat> have to request Phineas I mean to talk to him we need somebody who knew our situation so sure uh after seven hours a meal was brought to you uh go ahead and roll constitution see if you liked it or not uh 15 Probably yeah, the first yeah. solid thing I've had in my stomach since we time traveled. So. Yeah, Pr prison food's pretty good. Uh, you know, you you guys were running. Uh, Camille rode a goddamn goat. Zadar, you ran like hell. Uh, you had a really busy day. You were famished, so cardboard would have tasted good. Uh, yeah. Next door, you hear a voice, but you you kind of remember it, but you can't really place it. And they are just uh, singing some kind of dumbass ballad. So they must be a bard. Uh, after seven hours, uh, okay. Colonel Clank arrives, uh, apologizes for his delay, and asks you to come with him. You guys go out into the big room where you pledge your case. Uh, to the, magistrate. the puppy is there. Uh, they give you a plastic bag so you can clean up the mess. Uh, you get out there. There is no magistrate this time. Uh, there is, however, Brockhard Jaw Hente, uh, a gnome known as Phineas Ferb, uh, and another gnome that you guys know very well named Deacon Jones, the head minister of the church, uh, as well as another gnome that you do not know. You have not met. Uh, it's an older gnome. Kind of looks officially type, um, but you aren't really sure who he is. Uh, and when you look at him, he just has a blank look on his face. Like, he doesn't care if you live or die. He just he just has a neutral opinion. Uh, Colonel Clank uh, points out to you, my friends, this is only a hearing to try and to determine the truth. I will tell you in advance that uh, the incident on the street is being investigated, and thus far, it appears as though uh, you, Camille, were responsible for the deaths of several people due to your magic powers. Uh, we would like to inquire to you uh, where you stand on the homicide charges as well as the attempted kidnapping charge. Brock Hardjaw clears his throat. Kidnapping. You attempted to lure my wife into some kind of magical vortex, is what she told me. Um, does she remember anything else, like prior to our second jump? Or did we nail that moment just right? You apparently came really close. Okay. I mean, you can't really tell because you were all turned around and discombobulated. Right. Uh, 
there's there's a moment of unease and you can see kind of the neck muscles flare on brock uh colonel clank intervenes and points out that uh mrs hardjaw reports that uh you two were in the middle of some dubious uh arcane witchcraft like thing that she her presence was required uh, to make it happen. Perception checks. Is it our perception? Perception? Okay. Uh, 15. Uh, both of you notice the same thing. Brock Hardjaw looks dubious. Uh, Hente seems to be leaning towards Brock's opinion. Colonel Clank is completely unreadable. Deacon Jones is in a huff. Phineas seems to be entranced. And the gnome that you don't know who he is is almost asleep. Okay. I... Um... I talked to Camille. It's just like um, under our breath, just for us to hear that. Okay, there, there's a couple of options here, but I mean, I know you want to try to face the music on this, but we're probably going to need some kind of counsel. And I, we don't, we don't know what that time travel is going to do to us. Uh, but I think Phineas has an answer. He's in there. Yeah. Are you playing it up that you don't know what happened? Uh, Colonel Clank taps his foot, indicating that your sidebar has taken long enough, and looks over at Phineas. Uh, Phineas uh, points out, uh, in lieu of any other counsel uh, from this august panel, I would just like to say in their defense uh, that Hortense, uh, sweet, sweet Hortense, uh, was not abducted. I, I don't believe that there was any nefarious purpose by my two friends. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, these individuals are recognized as heroes in this city. And I think it might be a travesty of justice that, and the door opens in the back. In walks Sherlock Gnomes. Uh, everybody kind of looks over at him, uh, non-committal. Uh, and he has a smile on his face. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. He goes over, talks to Phineas Ferb for a moment, whips something out of his jacket, waves it under. Phineas is doing this. Uh, you can't really tell what it is. Everybody is awaiting a response. And Brock is still none too happy and says, can we get on with this? The gnome that you do not recognize you're you're the gnome that you do not recognize is now snoring uh this is causing deacon some problems uh however 
he tells Brock, uh, young Mr. Ferb here does have a point. Uh, I would like to ask the nutcracker if, uh, what, what was the spell that you used and why did you use it? Oh. <sighs> the old guy is waking up. Uh, Deacon Jones asks if you had ever used it before and if you knew the calamitous properties of it. Persuasion. Do you not believe that your actions were reckless? Uh, this is Hente. Uh, your actions seem reckless if you attempted a spell of such gravi uh, gravity that you had never tried before. Do you think that was a wise idea? Says it in a very non-committal tone. He was going to kill us. Yeah. D12 to see how this goes. Who wants it? <laughs> yeah, we should be able to do it. <laughs> Is that a two? That is a two. <sighs> Phineas Ferb stands up and he goes, uh, this august body needs to hear something. Uh, and he motions to Sherlock Gnomes, his investigator friend. Uh, he clears his throat and begins an exceptionally long, dry dissertation of what he has discovered uh, both at the site of the uh, disaster as well as a nearby room. Uh, he goes on expressing his ability on investigative skills and uh, powers of deduction. Uh, it is very long and drawn out. Both Hente and Brock have heard this story many, many times before. And they're just starting to get pissed at his buffoonery. Uh, Phineas is, you know, trying to coach him along. Uh, the old man has reached across, got himself a water glass. <laughs> Deacon Jones uh, seems to be taking it well. And Colonel Clank is a robot, so nobody gives a shit. Uh, it takes him, David, or is it RD10? A D10? Yep. Okay. Five. After five grueling minutes of dissertation, explaining the powers of deduction and scientific methodology that he has been using, he has discovered the pieces of the individual responsible for the deception on the guards. Uh, he has identified Gadget Go uh, as a female uh, gnome uh, and has actually discovered where she was residing. Uh, he has found a stack of documentation, which he pours out onto the table, uh, stating uh, the distinct plans on how the uh, crime had occurred. Uh, Brock, Hente, uh, and Deacon Jones, as well as uh, Colonel Clank, are very much interested now. So he now has their attention. He goes ahead and spells out the details. He shows them the proof and explains that this individual was working with somebody called Mortimer. Uh, Colonel, or 
Phineas Ferb kind of. Uh, yeah. Do any of them remember that you were looking for your friend, Mortimer? I, I'm going to try to be poker faced at this point. Uh, 20. Deacon Jones says, tall human, Mortimer, weren't you guys looking for? No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys were looking for a guy named Mortimer, tall human, weren't you? Is he a criminal? We're not sure. We think he could be unhinged. Oh, okay. (laughs) Clearly, this gnome is just bored as shit. Okay. Um, Is he supposed to be there? Everybody recognizes him. I mean, nobody's saying who the hell are they or anything like that. Um, After the dissertation, Colonel Clank uh, asks him what the body count was. Uh, Sherlock Gnomes goes ahead and points it out, points out the estimated damage to the structures, uh, the repair time on fixing those that were injured, uh, the uh, psychic damage caused by this horrible thing shown over and over on the hard jaw children, uh, and, and gives a rather comprehensive listing that tends to drone on uh colonel clank cuts him off and points out to recap um you camille uh used a spell that you had not used before in order to stop this threat of this individual i suppose the only logical question left is How did you know this person was responsible? Or are you just out killing citizens for the sheer fun of it? No, no. Uh, We were following up on the lead on the information that Colonel Clank had received, and we happened to be in the area and saw the person of that description fleeing, and it turned out to be her. Colonel Clank confirms that account, stating that he did, in fact, enlighten you too. So that is the correct answer. Uh, he then asks the present body, do you feel that we need to pursue this further or should we uh, go ahead and lodge this as a unfortunate accident? So... Phineas Ferb, you guys do not have to roll for him. Clearly, this was an accident. Sherlock Gnomes does not get a vote. Who wants to roll against me for Brock Hardjaw? God, what am I rolling? A D12 or a 20? D12. D12. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. Oh, make sure I got the lucky one. He ain't here, though. Seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this is a conundrum. <laughs> uh, Camille, roll against head tie. Nope, 12. D12. Uh, Zadar, Deacon Jones. Okay. And not let's wonder. <laughs> yeah, six. And Camille, this old fucking gnome. They ask for a few moments to discuss it in private. Uh, Colonel Clank takes you out of the room. Okay. 
he points out to you, my friends, I think this has just been an unfortunate accident. However, I would caution you on using magic of such devastating proportion. Things of this nature can go ahead and cause damage structurally as well as to the frail human gnome body. In this case, it caused both. I would ask you not to use that spell again unless it is in defense of life. Agree. 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 Zadar, D10. Okay. Six. Six minutes go by. Uh, there is a yell from Brock Hardjaw that you can come back in. Colonel Clank opens the door and allows you guys to go to the door. Uh, Sherlock Gnomes is gone. The old man is just uh, uh, Colonel Clank asks if the body has reached a decision. Uh, he says he will go ahead and pull each of the individuals to see what their answer is. A thumbs up indicates that it was an unfortunate accident. A thumbs down will indicate that um, you should be held over for the justice. Uh, there is no Chuck Norris, so Damn it. <laughs> uh, and Phineas cannot. Phineas is not going to do you any good because he is acting as your counsel. Colonel right. Clank is no good because he is an impartial individual. Uh, he asked for Brock Hardjaw's opinion. Thumbs up for you. Uh, he asked for Hente's decision. Neutral. She is undecided. Asks for Deacon Jones' opinion. Thumbs up. Surprising. <laughs> and he looks at the old man and he goes, it's an accident. Let's move on. We are wasting time. I need to get something to eat. Uh, Colonel Clank announces that there will be no charges filed against any of you at this time. <clears throat> uh, he points out that once uh, Sherlock Gnomes' report is available, uh, you may get a copy of it through uh, the local scribe, uh, and he will go ahead and forward it through the judicial process to make sure that any of the magistrates uh, do not take a different viewpoint. Uh, at this time, he announces that you are free to go. Brock, Hente, and Deacon all leave, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Hente, despite her neutral outlook, uh, wishes you the best of luck. She's clear, clearly... Uh, she just doesn't know what to think. Um, so uh, the old gnome is sitting there. Uh, you can, but Phineas says, uh, may I present to you our current expert on temporal analysis as, as you draw your hand back. He looks over at you and he goes, so what did you want to know about time travel? What can you? You guys? And one other. Yeah. Sidar, give me a constitution check. <laughs> oh, uh, this man. time at minus one. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> 11. <laughs> You are starting to feel queasy again at the thought of time travel. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Uh, give me insight checks. Okay. It, it might be from the medallion itself. Uh, uh, 19. Uh, you both, at your comment, you both start to think about it, uh, and you realize that neither one of you were sick any of the other two times that you used the medallion, nor was Mortimer. Uh, that is what you both surmise, the interaction between yourselves and your other selves 
is probably a negative factor. In that vein, you consider that Mortimer might have been giving himself insider information repeatedly, and that is why he is so ill. Uh, this guy introduces himself as Nomeo, and he uh, begins a dissertation on his abilities in understanding the time-space continuum vis-a-vis -vis through the library's archives. Vis-a-vis, -vis, he has never time-traveled before, but has met someone who has. And who might this individual be? I believe you know him as Mortimer J. Sneed. He is an instructor at the Grand Academy. Exactly. Okay, from what version of Mortimer have you met? You don't understand time travel, do you? No, I don't. I mean, according to me, you could have met a variant of himself. While there are such things as variants, in reality, it is just lesser you. Okay. You, you cannot exist in the same space. If you do, it will create a vortex uh, that will end your timeline as well as your other self. You are not 100% uh, when you time travel and meet yourself. Uh, there is a distinction as your uh, internal mana, so to speak, uh, is split up. Mm -hmm. So each time you do this, you lose a little bit of your own self and uh, that is what is causing you to vomit, is my guess. You have interacted with yourself. Sorry. You are going to become very sick. Okay, is it permanent or will it eventually pass? Or, it, or could restorative <sighs> magics make me whole? Restorative magics will not make you whole per se. You will have to travel to the area called... Katang, uh, in the eastern desert from here, just over the mountains. Uh, the problem with that is, uh, as I understand it, uh, the Katang dynasty was the one who created the time travel amulet. Uh, they had done extensive research and were believed to be an advanced race. Uh, in the Katang, uh, they believed in something called pyramids, an isometric triangle triangle uh, created as a domicile. Um, you will have to go to the Great Pyramid in Katang uh, in the hopes that a cure can be found written on the ancient texts. Okay. And what are what's going to be my consequences or just... If that doesn't happen, what am I going to have to live with? Uh, debilitating headaches, uh, constant vomiting, and you will start to uh, lose memory. Uh, it is called dementia. Okay. I have not explored that option. <laughs> well, you, apparently with Mar Mortimer, it was working fine. So, Well, you also have a bigger problem. And what is that? Your associate, Mortimer J. Sneed, was in Nathian not too long ago. As a matter of fact, I have received word that he took an aircraft out this morning. Uh, my, my, sources, my sources indicate that he went east. He may be trying to get to Katang first. Okay. Uh, let, let me ask you this. What is your summation of Mortimer? I was not able to speak with him. Okay, so you have no uh, idea about his character and all that, but you know the, you know the when, details of this case. He's implicated. When I met him one of the previous times, he seemed to be in common spirits. Uh, I am told from my individual sources uh, that he is not himself currently. Uh, as for aiding and abetting Gadget, uh, that could create a rather substantial problem. The bigger problem 
currently is the fact that you need to get to Katang. Uh, and there are no more uh, airships. airships available due to the explosion. So you will need to set out almost immediately. Um, you may even have to cut across the mountains. Um, the only other person that might be able to assist you uh, would be Zeppelin Smith, who has left, uh, or uh, the, I believe he's called the Pasha of Menace. Uh, that is one of the names he goes by. And who is this individual? Uh, he is one of the emirs, one of the leaders of the desert tribes. Uh, he um, is a powerful man uh, and doesn't like, uh, what is the word I am looking for? Flim flammery. Uh, he uh, has lost his wife a few years back uh, and uh, is very protective over a daughter, I believe. Uh, he also possesses a flying machine. So if you can get to Menace, can, it wouldn't. But well, if, if you're going to try and beat Mortimer, or at least come close to beating him, you're either going to have to go up through the mountains, which are filled with hill giants, and Aarakocra, or get to Menace. We'll go ahead and try to make our appeal to the Menace. I don't care. <laughs> okay. No, I, I'm just saying that that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that, that is his list of options that he has for you. Okay. All right. And I... Uh, he, he will he will point out if you do go see the Pasha of Menace uh, that you need to hold your tongue uh, because again he does not take kindly to flim flammery uh, and has his own set of problems as he attempts yes he is attempting to reunite the tribes tribes of Katang uh, he does not have a very good sense of humor, I am told. I have only met him once at an official state dinner. Uh, he and I did not get the opportunity to, to speak. Um, he's trying to unite the, the tribes of Katang. Is that what he's trying to do? Yes. Okay. I believe there are four. Mm. Oh. Uh, they are a militant a uh, group of individuals who do not like outsiders. Well, we can appeal to him and tell him we are experienced travelers and adventurers and that we'd be willing to help him on his cause to unite the tribes of Katang. Uh, I would caution you against making any promises that you cannot carry through. You do not know what he would ask. Uh, ergo, he may ask a great deal from you. And if you were unable to go ahead and do that, he may consider that a personal affront okay so i would use restraint in dealing uh with the pasha of menace okay all right noted and let me just check one thing in my notes because i know i wrote it down i just need to find it <laughs> okay uh yes the pasha of menace is who you need to see uh because he has uh, a device that will allow you to move rapidly over the sands of the desert. But you should probably leave now to get there. Hopefully it does not overheat. Uh, 
but I would. There's always that risk. I, I, I mean, this thing could get killed. <laughs> I, I would quickly, I would quickly gather supplies uh, and head out. Uh, there is a stable on the outskirts of town. Uh, I believe, looking at Zdar, uh, there might even be uh, a vehicle, i.e., an animal that can handle your frame, i.e., human. Oh yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yes, we'll head there now and um as much as i love the puppy camille there there's a risk that it could be <laughs> you really want to you know okay player player knowledge here you know how frank is with pets right <laughs> you know what happens to pets with frank right <laughs> I, I don't kill pets. <laughs> pets. Pets just die. It's not my fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see. <laughs> so, um, sure. that, that's your dealio. You can cut through the mountains, maybe beating him, but dealing with hill giants and Aarakocra, uh, these sworn enemies, quasi-sworn enemies of uh, the gnomes. Even though you did, you did, and if you did uh, save uh, Kennedy's life, uh, you know, there's that. Uh, but apparently, uh, Nomeo, since you were in the bathroom, that's what his name is, uh, says, <sighs> you know, you cross the desert and you get to Menace as soon as you can. And there you go. Hopefully you make a good impression on the Pasha and he allows you to utilize this item that he has to get there. Nice. Is the Pasha a human or gnome? He's a human. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, as you guys reach the outskirts of town, you find the stables. Uh, Andy's stables uh, and uh, there's a gnome there and he has several items uh, giant rams uh, a war cow uh, and uh, d12 against me Zadar hmm. uh, eleven uh, he also has what is what he calls a uh, menace mount. Essentially, it's an Arabian horse. Okay. All right, let, let's call him a Tangian steed. Okay. Tangian steed. <laughs> Mustang, Mustang, Mustangs, Mustangs are smaller. Uh, uh, the horse is very sleek. Uh, one to two, it's white. Three to four, it's black. Five to six, it's red. Uh, nope, I'm going with solid color. It is a red. Six. Okay. Uh, Matches my hair. He can uh, go ahead and sell you uh, this. Uh, do you want the giant ram or the war cow, um, Camille? Uh, roll intelligence. Um, uh, Andy's not too keen. Uh, he'll sell it to you. Uh, but he will point out that the war cow, if you're going east, I think you guys said, uh, the war cow is not your favorite desert terrain kind of animal. Uh, and he would suggest, uh, something else. He brings out an ostrich looking thing. Uh, but with a very large beak. Uh, it's essentially the same price as the war cow, uh, but it can be <coughs> temperamental at times. However, it is a fiercely loyal mount and could also assist you in the event of problems.
It's essentially a chocobo. Chocobo. From Final that's Fantasy. what I was gonna say. I love give me an, Give me an animal handling check. Both of us. Nope, or? just her. The tangy and mount is well right. versed. Yeah. Your mount likes you. Nice. Uh, maybe it wants the puppy. <laughs> uh, the mounts are going to cost you the hefty sum of 600 gold pieces. Now we got that, but that's going to that's gonna hurt. <laughs> so. He will throw in enough water to get you to your destination. Which is to the Pasha, right? Mm -hmm. Menace. Okay. Oh, menace. All right. I, I, I did not enable um, screen sharing. Otherwise, I could show it. It's going to take about a week to get there. Okay. Uh, you know, let's see if he likes you guys. Yeah, he likes you. Uh, he'll also include a sketch of where the water hole is between here and Menace. Okay. So he says about three days in, uh, you can refill your uh, water skins and you should be okay. Take you about four days to get to Menace after that. So you don't want to get lost. <laughs> so right. uh, if you get lost, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Um, but it's going to cost you 600. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay it. You guys have got yourself a mount. Uh, it is uh, mid-morning, almost lunch, or no? It's evening, isn't it? Mm -hmm. be no, evening. it's afternoon. It's afternoon. Uh, you can head out now if you want, uh, or you can get a good night's sleep and delay your trip. But you know, you did see the airship leave early this morning. Yeah. So already you're a little bit behind the eight ball. Yeah. What do you want to do, Camille? <laughs> okay. You, you got you guys are pretty beat up. Yeah. And have yeah, no we definitely need lines. that. Yeah. Do you want to sleep the full eight hours and get out before sunup? Or do you just want to go eat, prepare yourself, sleep normal, and get up at your normal time and go? What do you want to do, Camille? <laughs> we'll definitely need to eat and partake in a meal and all that and rest. D12 against me, Zadar. Three. Not a good roll for you. Uh, and with that, we will call it a night. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Since you guys have been to the future, what happens tomorrow? It rains. A lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Mm-hmm. Because the next day was during the interview stage. Yeah. You guys yeah. have traveled back in time. Yeah. We've been back to the future. That's um, right. Great Scott. Um, great Scott, Marty. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish I was barred. I could sing well, that song, uh, uh, The Desert and with a Horse with No Name. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, not happy about the consequences with what Zadar has to live with, but for now, but yeah. It'll get so, worse before it gets better. Yeah, I'm sure it will. But at least your role was close enough uh, mm -hmm. that you got back correctly. And karma was actually on, on our side because, I mean, we were trying to do good, so... Sure, Elliot Nest. Go out and do some good. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's it. 
I mean, yeah, we kind of bent the truth a little bit, but it saved us, you know. Terry, what'd you think? <laughs> you wasn't trying to do good. I know. I remember that episode because I, I I asked my friends, uh, you know, what happened when I had lost connection to you? <laughs> She's just like, Carrie, Carrie didn't care. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's my fault. I interacted with myself, so. I'm sure it won't play any major part. <laughs> Who, me or Mortimer? Oh. Or no, no, been changing right. the changing the past. Uh, well, right now he doesn't have a time trial lane. Yet. That's why he had to fly out. Yeah. Uh, what'd you name the puppy? I don't give two shits whether you keep the puppy or not. Whether it lives or dies is uh, a dice roll away. I named the horse Reverie. Yeah, true. That's true. Um, folks, this has been Burner Hobo Inc. the or the Cacophony Edition. Uh, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D and D, join our Discord. If you're in the market for some customized dice, woohoo! Uh, go on over to Twitter. Hit up at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, if your game stinks and you want to make it smell better or you want to learn to write better than me, uh, go on over to oddfishgames.com. Check out their uh, Adventure Sense and their Shine system. Uh, if you want to buy any of our weird crap, uh, the link is also down there. <laughs> uh, we have a one-shot this Saturday if you're interested. And uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. And we hope tomorrow uh, eases on into the weekend and uh, – who knows? Maybe the world problems will start to eke back into discussion. Uh, <laughs> let's give them a big wave and kiss, folks. Mwah! Bye, everybody. Take it home. <laughs>